Hey everyone, I'm Amanda Niederhauser and I am here today in the Riley Blake Design Studio. It's so much fun. You might know me from my blog or Instagram as Jedi Craft Girl, where I always post about all my quilty um, endeavors and I also post about my little cat, Baby Mufasa, who helps me in my sewing room. I'm so excited to share my latest collection of fabric with Riley Blake Designs and it is called Leafy Keen, and I am so excited about this, and so I wanna just give you a little peek into the world of Leafy Keen. It's inspired by life with a cat, an indoor cat, because indoor cats don't have a real jungle, so they usually use our house plants as their jungle. So this collection has cats and plants and everything in between. I'm gonna give you a little peek into the fabric because it's just better in, in real life. There's a leopard print and butterscotch, and then look at all these greens. They're perfect for adding to your green stash or for making the quilts in this collection. Then we get these fun pinks, and then a little bit of metallic shimmer as we have antique gold. So I am so excited about this collection because it does look like my cat, but because I love cats and I love plants and the colors are just so fun. So today, I am gonna show you how to make a block from one of the patterns that's in this collection. This pattern is called Plant Life, and I am so excited that I finally get to tell everyone about this quilt because I designed it so long ago and now it's finally in production. What this is are quilt blocks that look like plants because I think I'm a better plant mom if it's gonna be in my quilt than in my garden. So this kind never needs to get dug up and they're always green. There's 20 different, 20 different um, plants in this quilt. And I'll just give you a little peek inside. Each of the little plants here, they have a name. Because who doesn't wanna name their plant? So we are gonna get started with how to make the plant life quilt block. All right, so first off, I'm gonna show you how to make the flower pot. What you're gonna need is we are using this uh, natural linen, and this is actually in the Leafy King collection. All the fabrics I'm using today are from Leafy King. And what I love about this linen was, since we were doing plants, I wanted something with a real earthy element because plants grow in the earth. And so there's three different colors of a linen blend. And if you haven't tried Riley Blake's linen blend, you need to do it right now because they're my favorite for quilt backgrounds. They just have such texture and warmth. So this color I thought was perfect for the flower pot and has little designs on it. So I'm gonna have three little parts to my flower block. I have them all cut here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna sew those together like that. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like once they are sewn together. So this is the flower pot. Now you might say that does not look like the flower pot in the quilt pattern, and you're right. But I only like to cut squares and rectangles and flower pot angles and templates are not my thing. So I've, I've come up with a way that you can make this without having to get templates or doing things to 100% on your computer and printing it out or needing something special squares and rectangles, I promise. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna put this on my mat and I'm gonna line it up with the edges here. And I'm gonna take my little uh, fabric marker that goes away when you iron it and I'm gonna measure in to this much right here. I'm measuring into two and a quarter and I'm gonna measure in to two and a quarter here. So now I have two Let's double check, right? Measure twice, cut once. Okay, so I'm great. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm going to connect. This is the top of the flower pot. You're probably seeing it in reverse. This is my top. The top corner, and I'm gonna line this right up to the mark that I just made. And I'm not gonna draw, I'm actually, I'm gonna cut. Don't panic, it's okay. It's an angle, but I'm gonna talk you through it and it's gonna be okay. And we didn't use any templates. All we did was measure, right? Okay, so we have our rotary cutter and I'm just gonna go like that. I know this is scary, but it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be super fun and you're gonna love it when you're done. And I'm gonna do the other side. Okay, so now you can see we have the flower pot shape. 
Okay, now how do we get that into a quilt block? Not to worry. Here's where the rectangles come in. I have my two background rectangles right here. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to place them right sides together and I'm gonna line up the edge of one side of my flower pot. And notice there's excess and I want excess at the bottom and the top. So here's what we don't do is this and have it all at the bottom. We wanna have some at the top and the bottom like this. And now what we're gonna do is go to the sewing machine, sew a quarter inch, quarter inch seam. seam. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited, I'm jumbling my words. Okay, so we're gonna put it right here and we're gonna sew. Here we go. And we're gonna just nice quarter inch. I'm gonna just double check that that is staying right together. You don't need to pin it, should be fine. And here we go. Okay, needle up. There we go. All right. So you can see here, we're gonna go over to our little pressing station right here. And I always like to set my seam. I don't know if you do, but I always do this first. I set it and then I feel like it's less likely to stretch or kind of do weird things. It just folds over nice like that. So I'm just pressing toward the white. It's okay. We can press toward the white on occasion. And I always like to just press to where my fabric wants to go. Who wants to fight fabric? Not me. So we're pressing out toward the white. All right, so you can see that. Now we're gonna take our second rectangle. We're gonna put it right like we did the first and we're gonna sew a quarter inch seam. And then we'll press it just like we did before. And this is what you're gonna end up with, is this unit. Okay, if you're a quilter and I saw this, I'd be like, nope, I'm done, what is this? This, this isn't even a shape. It's okay, we're not done yet. So we're gonna do the easiest part first. We're going to line our flower pot, the top, along one of your lines on your, rule, on your mat, and then this one will be here. They're the perfect width that they're supposed to be. I'm gonna take my ruler, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just use this line that I align the top of my flower pot with, rotary cutter, and I'm just gonna cut this part off right here. I'm not cutting the flower pot, it's right on the edge there. So when I pull this away, look, all that I really cut off was this tiny little part. Okay, now I have to put it back to where it was because we have to cut the bottom. You have to kind of square up that bottom. So here we go. I'm lining it up right with the edge of the flower pot. I'm gonna do the same thing, only this will be a little bit bigger chunk that gets cut off. We'll just move that. All right, okay, so you're probably thinking, okay, all right, that looks a little better, but what yet? Okay, we're gonna cut the sides and then it's gonna be a square. So I am going to line up the point of my flower pot and this one on the one. This is gonna be eight and a half inches. And if yours isn't quite eight and a half inches, maybe your seam allowance is a little different, um, you want to just kind of even it out so you were cutting the same amount off of both sides. We wouldn't wanna just cut more off of one than the other. I'm trying to keep it really symmetrical here. Okay, so mine is lined up here. So I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna just cut right here on that line. I'm gonna just toss that and then I'm gonna do it on this side. And look what we're gonna get. We are gonna get a flower pot block. Okay, was that fun and not scary? No templates, no special rulers or anything, just rectangles. You can totally do this. And we're gonna make 20 of them because there's 20 plants. So you just keep sewing these. It's easier to get the flower pots done first because they're pretty simple and all the same. So I like to just get those done, set those aside. I can focus on the plants. So I'm gonna just set this aside while we start on the plants. Okay, so like I said, there's several different plants and they all have names. And today we are sewing Gilbert. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have two shades of green. Um, if you look behind me, all the plants are a little bit different. I tried to use all the different colors of the green in Leafy Keen, which I think there's about eight different colors of green. Yes, 
That's so awesome. Um, you could also pull in a few basics or any green from your stash or scraps because we really don't need a lot to make one plant. So the more variety, the more it's gonna look like real plants because plants just have so many different fun shades of green and we're trying to look like that. So in this plant, I am using a dark green, which is a pine green, a Riley pine, and I'm using a light green. And this is actually, the light green is actually a linen that's in the collection. It's one of the other linen prints. So I thought that would be fun. So how I like to make my half square triangles might be different from you, not to worry. We all do things different. I'm gonna show you my preferred technique and you can totally make these how you want them. As long as they end up the size that it says in the pattern, you can make them however you want. So I am of the half square triangle school of having a square this is the color of the little point I want and the background square. And I'm going to put them together. I'm gonna to draw, actually I'm gonna draw the line first. Some people have fancy um, machines and they have lasers and they don't have to draw lines, but mine isn't that fancy. So I still will draw the line and I'll just draw it like that, corner to corner. And then I put it right side together with one of my greens, just like that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew on this side of the line and this side, one quarter inch away. And I've already done that for you because I think this is a process you're pretty familiar with. So I've sewn here and I've sewn here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just trim them apart right on that line. And now I have two half square triangles. Ta-da! These were my step outs. So this is leopard and this is not going in Gilbert, but isn't it cute? Don't you want a leopard plant? Okay, so I have those done and I'm gonna give them a little press and I'm gonna press these toward the dark. Again, pressing is a preference. Some people love to press open. Some people always press to the dark. In this, I found it helpful to press to the dark. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna just give these a little press. Again, I'm gonna heat set, because I do, I do think that helps. A little heat set. I'm gonna just roll it over like that. And then I'm gonna use my Riley Blake copper because I have several of these at home, and I just set it right on there while I'm doing the other one. Same little process. Roll that right over, give it a little heat. And then I'm gonna clapper that. Okay, so now I have two half square triangles. Now the one thing I do in my half square triangle measurements is I allow space for you to square up. And if this is not what the method you do and you like to just sew them how they finish, you do that. I am a square upper because that's when I get to watch TV, right? Or do something that's like, oh, I can watch this show because I don't need a pattern. I don't have to be focusing. What I do is I have my little mat and I put my little square upper template on and I can take this anywhere. I can be out with the TV with the kids. I've even taken it to soccer practice and put this mat on the picnic tables when, when I was squaring up like 258 half square triangles. You kind of learn to take it anywhere. That's why these small mats are handy and the little templates handy. So what I'm gonna do is I've, I've lined this up right on the line and I'm gonna just give it a little trim. And I keep a little bit of pressure in the middle as I rotate. And then you kind of pull these away like this. And now we have our half square triangles. And what I have done is I have already made the ones for Gilbert that I wanted to use in this. So here we go. I'm gonna show you, um, we have that one and then this is our dark and our light. So. Now that we have our half square triangles squared up and all done, it's time to put the block together. Okay, so this block also has four just background squares. Some of the blocks are all half square triangles and some have a few background squares. And I'm gonna give you a little challenge. You play around once you've made all your half square triangles, see if you can come up with your own creative plant using this technique because every plant has the same construction. It's all half square triangles or maybe a few solid squares. And it's all the same pattern. So it's gonna be four rows of four. So there's 16 total in the block. So you could call it a 16 patch. So I am gonna lay out Gilbert right here 
we are going to see how this plant comes together. And if you want to change something, all you have to do is rotate. Be like, oh, I don't like that. You can rotate the half square triangles and kind of have fun playing with it. What I love is it just gives you the tools to have fun. Because really, half square triangles are just, are just like a puzzle, right? You can mix and match, and you just never know what you're going to come up with. It could be the next great quilt, quilt pattern. OK, so I'm going to keep putting Gilbert together here. Keep my wits about me here so I can make sure we've got all the pieces. What I like to do, you can see it takes a minute to lay it out because they are all going a little bit different way. I like, since there's multiple of these, what I would do, I would lay this one out and then I would lay out the next one and the next one because there's three blocks of this in the quilt. So I would just get them all stacked and then I'd go to my machine and just start chain piecing away. And it is nice to keep the pattern out of the plants for reference. And that's why I kind of made them larger in here so you could keep it out while you're sewing. Okay, that one goes there because it can get a little tricky since they're all the same and it's just like twist and turn to just give it a little difference. So as you can see, they're all 16 patch and we've just twisted and turned and rotated or put a, a plain block in to get a different plant. So now that it's laid out, you can see four rows by four, you're just gonna use traditional block piecing where you would sew this together, then this, then this row, then this row. Then you're gonna press them. And I did press them open. I'm gonna show you the finished one. Um, again, you can press how you want, but when we start getting point intersections like this, it starts getting a little bulky, and I do like to get them as flat as I can. So I did press these open once they were all together. So you're gonna sew that together, and guess what? All of a sudden, you're gonna have a plant. And so once you make your first plant, you'll get super excited, and you'll be like, okay, what's the next plant? I can't wait to make the next one. So now that we have our plant top done, it needs a pot, right? So what we're gonna do, if you'll notice, it's gonna to fit together just like that. So I am going to put these right sides together. And if you want, you can pin, but I think this is gonna stay. Um, and I'm not really matching seams because the flower pot is just flat, which is nice. So we're gonna just get our plant planted as we're sewing this together. Okay, let's, here we go. So I am going to kind of be careful and make sure my quarter inch seam is happening because I don't want to cut my little plant points off. So I'm hoping for the best here. Okay. All right, let's see. Um, I'm going to move that. Okay, I'm going to peek first. You can't see it. Okay, okay it's cute. All right, we're going to press it now. Okay, so I'm gonna press it, I'm gonna heat set my seam just like we've been doing, and then I'm gonna press toward the flower pot because again, I wanna go with the direction the fabrics want to go, and they are a little more bulkier here. So I'm just getting a nice press here like this. Okay, all right, let's bring it over and look at it. All right, now we have a flower plant block. So I hope that was fun and motivate you to want to make more plants. Um, another idea you can do with this pattern, if 20 plants seems a little much for your calendar, um, if you look at how the row is, it almost looks like a table runner itself. So you could just do one row of plants and then put a little border and bind it. And you could have a super cute table runner or a console, or you, know, you could fold it over a couch or something if you just wanted um, not quite as intense a commitment to half square triangles. It does take a minute. And um, I do like to keep busy while I'm doing all the squaring up. Like I said, I'll take it somewhere, I'll watch a movie. Pace yourself. Don't try to do all the half square triangles at once or you might get mad at me. So do a few and then make a couple. Do a few, you know, so a few more to just kind of pace yourself so you don't get burnt out on so many triangles. But they go fast, and when you're done, you get to have super cute plants that you can hang in your house and have all year long, and they 
they don't turn brown and they always love you. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. I hope it was helpful. I enjoyed being here with you today and be sure to find me on Instagram at Jedi Craft Girl and make sure to ask your local quilt shop for Leafy Keen because you're gonna wanna sew with it. Mm -hmm.